Speaking about issues that really matter, over the weekend we had the March for Our Lives campaign nationwide. Millions of people came out to march, and we had one here in Sacramento that mm -hmm. had an excellent turnout. But there's a lot of chatter on social media about what are the next steps. And this morning we asked you guys on the Morning Blend, do you think that these marches are going to affect any change? At the end of the poll, we had about 54% of you saying yes, that there would be a change coming from this, but it kept Staying on that middle line, you guys weren't sure if anything would come of this. And I made a comment about how Remington, who sells AR-15s, they finally filed for bankruptcy. They talked about it before the Parkland shooting, but today we have the news mm -hmm. that they finally filed for bankruptcy. And so while it's not a direct connection between the two, it's an interesting juxtaposition that we're seeing here. And it's something that people have been talking about all morning on social media. It is interesting. I mean, you would think that uh, in the era where guns are very popular, mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. I mean, millions and millions sold every year, you would, I would, it's difficult to imagine a gun manufacturer having hard times. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? But, uh, but as you pointed out this morning, you had a very good point. I won't speak for you. You speak for yourself. Well, thank you, Rob. <laughs> Here I go with my information that I learned this morning. Let me no. quote. <laughs> you <laughs> quote yourself. Yeah, no, you know, I think if you look back through history, whenever we have a pro or a pro Second Amendment president, like mm -hmm. we do with Donald Trump, mm -hmm. you know, people are not afraid of losing their weapons. People mm -hmm. are not afraid of losing right. their guns because they know that he's going to protect them and their gun rights. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to go out and buy guns. Now, remember right. when Barack Obama was president, I know people were selling AR-15s. Stockpile. I, wait, I, did I just admit to people bringing <laughs> laws? Maybe people were selling, like there was a lot of gun buying, right. a lot of gun purchasing for this particular weapon because right. people were afraid that you weren't going to be able to get him anymore because right. he was going to, quote, unquote, take our guns. So uh, we talked a little bit about how the Remington filing for bankruptcy mm -hmm. kind of related to the lawsuits from the Sandy Hook massacre. Correct. Because, you know, they had to pay out a lot of money. And I like to see people was like, okay, we can't get you in gun control laws. They took it around. It was like, let's hit you where it hurts. Right. And sue the owner or the maker of mm -hmm. these guns. But it's kind of those things. It's like we have a pro-gun president, so we don't have to go out and buy all the guns. Whereas we yeah. had a different kind of president, all the gun companies are rolling in the dough because everybody's buying weapons. Right. You know what scares me, though? I just found out from Hillary, one of our producing staff, that the people from Remington, that the company was purchased by another company who would make them at a lesser quality. Mm. And that is something that That's scares scary. me. That's scary. Because in a world where we've been talking about gun control, gun regulation, and gun safety... What you don't want, and we don't is know this to be true, quality. is a lower quality gun. And mm -hmm. so that scares me. That's something that we'll continue to track for you guys so that you're mm -hmm. in the know as much as possible. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's also something, too. I, I mean, I think all these are happening, too. But some, some companies are just mismanaged. And mm. one of the things that I was reading about Remington is that, they, you know, a, a lot of companies live off debt and trying to... and and interest rates have been going up, mm -hmm. and then maybe they have a huge payment or they yep. need to refinance or whatever. So there, there may be something just as simple as the books, it just didn't add up. So yeah, they're going right. to have to file for bankruptcy, redo it all, and then come back. But, but when you're making money hand over fist, usually that stuff doesn't really matter. So mm -hmm. I do think there's other factors yeah. as well yeah. that are playing into it. Maybe, you know, maybe they projected this. Donald Trump gets elected, mm -hmm. very pro Second Amendment, and then so the, the numbers just Many didn't things. add up because, as you mentioned, and you can chart it's not just our words. You can watch it. You know, uh, when when Barack Obama was the president, gun sales were record highs all the time. Mm -hmm. The unintended consequences right. of uh, who we elect. All but, right. What's so interesting though is during the March for Our Lives whole campaign, especially in D.C., you had Emma Gonzalez, who's been at the front of this conversation from the very beginning. She's one of the survivors of the Parkland school shooting. She stood there in silence for the amount of time that mm -hmm. the shooter was active in their school yes. to just call attention to the amount of time that it took for him to do this mm -hmm. and for nobody to act in that time. Mm -hmm. And I think that was incredibly powerful. It was, it was profound. incredible. Profound. Right. Yeah, they're, they're saying that, that it was the most powerful silence spoken at the Capitol Mall ever. Right. And I, I did not see it, I did not hear it, but that's the reaction that I'm seeing from all over. Oh, so. I watched it on Twitter mm -hmm. uh, from my bed, and I was like, this girl. To I don't know who is behind these people and helping them navigate their thought processes mm -hmm. or if it's just them. I think these are just some really talented, bright, young minds. I'm so I excited. I love it. And, and but it's just interesting to me how it's all unraveled so eloquently. Mm -hmm. and I, one, one thing I'm really happy about, and regardless of their point of view, okay. one thing I'm really happy about is I feel like young people, I've said this so many times on okay. the show, they are so marginalized when they have so many things working against them that's mm -hmm. not their fault. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's, it is really tough out there. 
the, there are jobs, but there's not that many really great ones. Mm -hmm. There's pay, but it's not that great. They're going into an environment where they've got tons of student debt. Mm -hmm. Home prices are crazy. Everything's expensive. Yeah. They're delaying getting married, delaying having kids, doing all these things just because Raise they're, hands. yeah, they're, they're rea <laughs> I mean, it's really tough. So that's just for the people getting, you know, graduating from college. But let's take it back a little bit further. Okay. I mean, these these kids in high school right now, they have the way they know that that's what they're about to go into. Yep. And so I just think that the time has come when we we have to stop marginalizing these young people. You know, when you're 18, exactly. you have a job, then I'll listen to you. Uh -huh. They have things going on in yeah. their lives. They have something to say. You may Absolutely not agree correct. with it, but I feel like these kids are standing up for something. Mm -hmm. How many of us have really yeah. stood up for whatever it may be, stood up for something mm -hmm. passionately? Not many of us and yeah. not recently, but I got to tell you, we, we, got, we should be proud of these kids because this is what they think and this is what they're doing about it. And even if you don't agree with it, they're not, they're, they're in this generation where it's don't say, like you, you especially shouldn't say anything and whatever you say is not important because you're young. Right. And I think we're realizing, wait a second, that I, is that really fair? And they don't think no. they don't think it's fair. And they had one of the biggest protest marches right. that, that that has ever happened. And this is the next generation of students that are going to be of voting age right. very soon. Aren't and you excited? I am. David Hogg, who is one of the students from Parkland shooting, he tweeted out, and we mentioned it on Morning Blend, that mm -hmm. he thinks the NRA is going to have some bills to pay Ooh. coming up soon, and that. Republicans are really going to lose out on seats when these midterm elections come around. But that is only if, okay. only if, and I'm pointing at you, if there are some kids watching this <laughs> this morning. Are they on spring break this week or was that last week? I think it's between the two. And between the two. They have to stand up and vote. Yes. You know, they have some of the lowest voter turnout of any other generation. Mm -hmm. I think it's up. In 2016, it went up to mm -hmm. less than 50%, but that's behind every other voting mm -hmm. generation in our time so the only way that these marches will turn into change mm -hmm. is if they go to the poll and make it because right. you know a lot of times this is cool yeah. i want to be at the take the selfie at the marsh if this is mm -hmm. us taking a selfie we're right. at the marsh taking a selfie right i need you to take this selfie outside of a polling place right. after you voted with your i voted sticker right. i want to see that too. and however you want to vote but people have to vote i mean i rem i remember there was this big push back in the day when puff daddy had this campaign called oh, vote or die yes, yes. I, remember remember that? I remember vote that or die. <laughs> it was like it depended on your life or something. right it yep. was all it was all over MTV yep. it was uh, it was this huge push and then the results came back as far as what percentage of young people voted and the headline and I remember this to this oh, day was vote or die or whatever oh. basically saying all these movements don't matter because if you don't vote then you're just kind of you're just saying this about whatever right. issues passionate to you so every all generations all age groups Everybody. all demographics I mean voting in this country is pathetic yeah I mean we people died for your right to vote Right. You, I say that you, all the time. You, exactly. And you know what? Here's the weird thing. It's never been easier. Everybody especially so especially easy. in California. Oh my goodness. Really? It is so okay. yeah, you vote this by, you vote by mail. Yeah. It, you can be permanent absentee. This is a state where you do not have to give a reason. In some states, okay, you can be absentee, but what's your reason? I mean, mm. they in some states make it really difficult to vote. Okay. The whole standing in line for hours thing. Yeah, it, no, it, from California, we're, we're yeah, we're looking at it like why are they doing that? Why can't they just Fill out an absentee form and Go mail figure. it in, or what is going on here? Why would you want to make it hard yeah. to vote? That's a whole other extra shot conversation that we can have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Vote or die, or whatever. And I remember that headline because it was so deflating. Right. Because the reality is, is that people were passionate. People spent money. They were after it, and then that was the results. I do not think it'll be the result this time. Okay. Well, I will say this: the organizers of the event they came forward saying that the next step for them is going to be making sure that they get these seniors who are about to be eligible to mm -hmm. vote to get out there and to sign up to vote. So fingers crossed mm -hmm. that they do that so we can see this generation who is active in speaking about what they want mm -hmm. actually put their finger on that voting ballot exactly. and press the button for what they want. That's mm -hmm. what we need. Love it. Mm -hmm.